Okay. Now that we've done this, now we've got some calculations. So it turns out, in dealing with freezing point depression, calculation, this is on your sheet, is the change in that freezing point will equal negative I times a freezing point constant times molality. So we're totally going to be using molality, just like I said a little bit ago, not molarity, for this kind of calculation. Now why is it negative? Yeah, it's decreasing. It's going down. The change is negative because it's going down. Okay. If we look, the boiling point elevation equation is very similar. Delta T boiling equals I K B M. But it's positive now because boiling points go up. They're elevated. So it's a positive change from the boiling point. Okay. So if you look, if I told you that I put... Um, Say I told you I put 80 grams of NaOH in 500 grams of water. And my question is, two questions, what's the freezing point and what's the boiling point of that particular solution now? If it was, and it's in water, so what would be the, if it was pure water, what would be the freezing point again? Be zero. And what would be the boiling point? A hundred. We expect you to know those. If I talk about anything other than water as my solvent, we'll give you freezing points and boiling points if we think you need them. But for water, we expect you to know them. And so we're going to see how far away from zero we are for the freezing point and how far away from 100 degrees Celsius we are for the boiling point. So, and for you to be able to answer this question, I need to give you two more pieces of information, the constants. And so I'll give you those. The freezing point constant for water, is that, and the boiling point constant is there. So two different constants. And every different solvent tends to have its own set of constants. And they typically got to be provided for you. OK. So in this case, if I want to look at the change in the freezing point of the solution, I need I. What is I for NaOH? How many ions does it break up into if it breaks up into ions at all? Two. Two. So what's the cation? Sodium is the cation. What's the anion? Hydroxide's a polyatomic ion, and there's one of them in that formula. Cool. So it's two ions total. So we know the Van Hoff, fa Van Hoff factor is two. What's the freezing point constant for water? 1.86 degrees Celsius for every molal of pieces. That's what that actually means, degrees Celsius per molal. And then I need, I've got those two, but I need the molality now. And that's not given directly. We're going to have to figure it out. And we're going to have to figure it out based on the definition of molality in this case. So first off, how many moles of solute and how many kilograms of solvent do we have? Which one's easier to figure out? Actually, I like go into kilograms of solvent. How many kilograms is 500 grams of water? Well, one kilogram is how many grams? A thousand. So then 500 would be half of a kilogram, 0.5 kilograms. And so in this calculation, we got 0 0.5 kilograms of solvent. But the question is, how many moles of NaOH? Well, I need the molar mass here. Sodium's 23. Oxygen, 16. Hydrogen is 1, and the overall molar mass is 40. So I'm making the math a little nice here. If the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per mole, well, we have 80 grams. So how many moles do we have? We got two moles, exactly. And again, we could you know, do the plug and chug, but take it for granted here. A molar mass is 40, so then we have exactly two moles. And so what is our molality in this case? What's 2 over 0.5? 5. That's 4 molal solution. And now we've got everything we need to actually do our plug in and chug in here for the freezing point. So in this case, the change in the freezing point 
again, equals negative i, k, f, m. So in this case, what was i again? Good, breaks up into two pieces. Freezing point constants, 1.86 degrees Celsius for every molal. And the molality here, we decided was a four molal solution. So if you look at what's going on here, even though it's a four molal solution of NaOH, because it breaks up into two pieces, what will be the total concentration of pieces? Well, it's four molal NaOH, but then NaOH breaks up into a sodium and a hydroxide. And so you get four molal of sodium ions and four molal of hydroxide for a grand total of eight molality of pieces, if you will. For every molal of pieces, the freezing point goes down 1.86 degrees. And so in this case, if we have eight molal of pieces, then you have to multiply that by eight, which is what we're doing. So that's kind of where the ideology of the equation comes from. And so in this case, I definitely need some serious help here for somebody to calculate delta T here for me. What is it? Cool. And if that's the change in the freezing point, then I need also the freezing point of that solution. Awesome. Well, it's relative to zero, so you know, add zero to that. You know, add the change to zero, and you still get the freezing point as also negative 14.8 degrees Celsius. Notice the change in the freezing point and the freezing point are only the same because it was all relative to zero. Notice we do this for any other compound whose freezing point's not zero, we get two different answers right here. But this will be demonstrated when we do the boiling point here. So boiling point works the same way. Change in the temperature of the boiling point, I times KB this time, times the molality. So in this case, Van Hoff factor is still two. Boiling point constant is given as 0 0.5 degrees Celsius per molal, and we still have a four molal solution. And so in this case, what's the change in our boiling point come out to? Good. Two times four is eight. Eight times a half is four. And so it's a four degrees Celsius change. And so then what would the overall boiling point be for that solution? Awesome. It would be 104 degrees Celsius. Take the normal boiling point of water, 100, and add in the change to get a total of 104. Either one of these could be the question. They could ask you for the change in the boiling point, or they could just ask you for the boiling point itself. So be careful.